Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette. Here with the next video, and this one is all about defensive variety. And what I mean by that is we're going to talk about whether or not you should use expos on ground or air, if you should use geared up cannons, archer towers, and if you should use a single or a multi inferno at Town Hall 10 and 11. Uh, this video was requested by a patron on Patreon. You guys can check out my Patreon page, link in the description, uh, to get this perk where you can request a video each month or other perks like custom war bases. So be sure to check that out. But that being said, let's get into the uh, substance of this video and we're going to talk about a few different options you have defending at uh, the main town hall levels, town hall 9, 10, 11. We have some replays, we have some developer build action. This first one here, I want to talk a little bit about multi infernos because we like never see them anymore, but should you use them in any circumstance? The default should be no, and um, the reason is somewhat proven by the fact that no one uses them. That's a pretty good sign that they're not that strong. But when would you want to use them? And I think at Town Hall 10, if you have a low level base now, um, it is getting a lot easier just to three star with a mass like Valk attack the Falcon, something like that. So sometimes the multi-infernos can mix it up, make it a little harder. They definitely make it harder for Laloon. Um, it's much easier to Laloon against single infernos in most circumstances. So if you are a low-level Town Hall 10 like this base, you might want to think about using the multi-infernos. The main reason we don't use them is because it's so easy to queen charge. So this is actually a pretty good use of the multi-inferno on this base. Um, because the Inferno can't be reached by the Queen, and it kind of blocks all the wall breakers. It's very difficult to wall break in, and that's the main thing you want to make. If you decide to use a multi-Inferno, make sure it can't be Queen charged. Have it um, be able to guard all the walls, because the Inferno can kill wall breakers as long as the walls are close to it. So make it tricky, kind of like how this base does. Now this is a 3 star, it did just get destroyed by the Falcon, but um, had it been a little more anti-Falcon, this would have been a much harder base to 3 star, because it's harder to do Laloon. Hogs are about the same, maybe even a little trickier against the Multi Inferno, depending. Um, but it's a pretty good anti Laloon. So if you want to make a base that can defend um, the Falcon, especially, um, and defend probably Hogs pretty well, the Multi Inferno will give you a leg up on uh, the Witch Bowler attacks, as well as Laloon, especially. So I'd recommend it not for Town Hall 11s. Um, anti-2 or anti-3 star bases, Town Hall 11s, you're going to want to use those single infernos because you want to get locked on to the king, to uh, the queen, the warden if possible, that's what you're hoping for. I mean it's too easy to heal through it, but if you are a Town Hall 10 um, and you're a new Town Hall 10, think about the multi-infernos, it can throw off some attackers who aren't used to seeing it, and it can prevent against some of those attacks, like I said, if you can have your base strong in other categories. Um, so let's switch gears to um, the Expos, should you put them on ground and air. This one base, I think, is a pretty good demonstration. It has one Expo on ground, and I don't mind ground Expos. The place you want to put them is near your air defenses. If you're going to have an Expo near air defenses anyway, it doesn't hurt too much to put it on ground, because the air defenses are already dealing the vast majority of the air damage. Um, that's where Lava Hounds are going to be. Of course, Lava Hound, La Loon is your main thing you want to defend when you are, uh, when you're talking about air. That's the main purpose you'd have your Expos pointed up, is to defend against La Loon. And that does work, um, having Expos help with dealing some damage to balloons. But in the area where air defenses already are, the main players are the air defenses and the lava hounds. And if you have an expo pointed up, it'll probably just lock onto a lava hound. Um, there's not a whole lot of purpose. It, compared to the damage an air defense does, the expo is really not doing that much damage. The place where you want the expo pointed up is like in this base, away from the air defenses, because oftentimes, at, um, depending on how the attack goes, that will be where the uh, lava hounds have already popped and it's just balloons left. That's when the damage that the uh, Expos do is much more important. So Town Hall 9, Town Hall 10, maybe even Town Hall 11, that's the main principle you want to look at is if I have an Expo that's like next to three air defenses, might as well put it on ground because either there's two things that can happen. Either there's Lava Hounds that will be tanking there and it won't matter anyway, or um, there won't be any Lava Hounds and 
the air defenses will be doing enough damage to the balloons anyway to screw up the attack. So really it's kind of a, uh, it doesn't matter if it's helping the air defenses or not. Of course the benefit of having an expo pointed down is it can reach air, or it can reach ground troops better. It's better against queen walks. Um, it just has more range, which is three tiles, not a huge deal, but it definitely helps um, no matter where it is on the base to have that extra range. And it often is going to be worth it if it's in an area, like I said, that's already surrounded by air defenses. So you don't need, it's going to be negligible, the extra damage it would be doing in that area compared to the air defenses that are already there. But like I said, um, if it's in a place where it's going to be like at the end of the Laloon, then you might want to think, okay, this is where a few balloons could be towards the end. And th at that point, I want to have the expo able to take out some like half health balloons that are just kind of uh, gliding around the base. All right, let's switch gears a little bit to uh, developer build and talk about the double cannon and the uh, smaller archer tower, the geared up versions of both these point defense. We're going to send five hogs at both of these, just kind of see how the damage compares. And what you'll see is that the double cannon does do more damage over a longer period of time. Um, it has the burst, which is very, very powerful. Two of them can kill a hog, typically. Um, we'll go ahead and send three hogs at each air defense here, and they actually will get through um, all four of these defenses. Then we'll do the same thing against a normal cannon, as well as just an archer tower there as well. Um, so the point is, yeah, the double cannon does do more damage, but it's not a whole lot more. And it has a very reduced range, as you guys will see if you pull it up in your home village. Uh, the range is significantly reduced. So one more time now with the regular cannon. Um, the first time we did this, the hogs weren't able to get through uh, either defense, I think. And I think the same thing is going to happen here. Uh, the hogs get the air defenses, but only get partially through these uh, next two defenses. So the outcome is very similar uh, to what the, the outcome was with the double cannon. We'll do the same scenario we did uh, the second one here with three hogs on each, and it'll be pretty much the same thing. The hogs this time will get through both defenses. Um, the main point for the double cannon though is that you want to use it where it can reach a lot of defenses and um, there's just a lot in its area. You don't want it to only have like one defense within its range because that way if you're getting hit by hogs, the hogs will um, only be in range of the double cannon for a very short period of time. Um, switching over to the archer tower for just a moment here, um, the geared up archer tower also very reduced range. And it is strong against queen walks because um, even four healers can't keep the queen up. This is equal damage to what two archer towers would be doing. So that's valuable, but keep in mind there's a very small and very unlikely period of time where it can target the queen and the queen won't be targeting it because the queen's range is not that much smaller than the archer tower's range. So I like it better in La Loon scenarios where it can just mow down some balloons, as you guys can see right here. A few balloons that are a little bit lower in health from that wizard tower just get destroyed by this grounded archer tower. So I recommend keeping it away from air defenses, putting it in places um, where the a La Loon might finish, uh, possibly for both Town Hall 9 and Town Hall 10. And that way, um, you can take out a bunch of balloons towards the end of the attack. So let's switch up a little bit to some actual replays that have some geared up defenses and talk more about it. Um, double cannon, like I said, not a, not a huge difference either way. Neither of these make a huge difference um, because it's just one defense, but it's worth talking about for sure. And this double cannon in this scenario actually is going to do some pretty good work here on the golemites and the bowlers. So that's one thing it's good for is if you kind of keep it a little distance from where the kill squad's going and it can take out bowlers real nice. Um, and it's bowlers, hogs, the mid HP troops, it can take out in like two bursts, which is definitely valuable. Um, the reason I said earlier that you want to put it where a bunch of defenses are near it is that way um, a golem, hogs, any defense targeting troop that's at a defense in its range will be hit by that extra damage. Whereas if there's no other defenses, then by the time the hogs or the golem or whatever gets there is in range of the cannon, the next defense will probably be that double cannon. So there's less time that the cannon will have to deal damage to whatever troop is nearby. Um, so just keep that in mind here. Again, I think we have another double cannon replay. And uh, typically you're going to want to keep this away from where kill squads are going to be going. So that means kind of away from your queen. 
just because kill squads move quickly, they're typically raged up, and the double cannon might only get like one or two shots off before it gets destroyed by bowlers or the queen or something. So the lack of range makes it not a very good kill squad option, um, but if you do put it in an area, you know, maybe near air defenses and a lot of other defenses just kind of right adjacent to it, it can take out hogs pretty nicely. You just got to be careful because under heal, it hardly matters what's targeting hogs. They just don't die. It's mainly spring traps that will get the hogs when they're under heal. Uh, right here, the double cannon does some pretty good work on the king, actually. So you can kind of see the amount of damage it does right here. Um, just over this long period of time as the king walks around the outside of the base. So it's definitely um, something you want to use in certain situations. I'd recommend it more for Town Hall 9 than for Town Hall 10, just because Town Hall 9, um, you kind of have to take more risks. The double cannon, it can pay off, it can not pay off, but um, Town Hall 9, it's already hard to defend, so gearing up the double cannon, um, you might get lucky, it might lock on to like... Um, the king for like in this attack which was a three star but the point is it might lock onto a troop for a long time actually this one might not have been a three star yeah okay i guess it's not um so yeah you, you want to try to get somewhat lucky when defending at town hall nine and using the double cannon you know away from where a kill squad is surrounded by other defenses is a good way to get some damage on uh, ground troops. So I'd, I'd recommend it more for Town Hall 9 than for Town Hall 10, but if you do use it at Town Hall 10, same principles apply. Um, this is one of the few replays I found with a archer tower that was geared up. Um, and this is actually a rare example as well because it will lock on to the queen, but the point is the queen's going to be raged up anyway because there's an expo in the area. So really, the uh, archer tower shouldn't be used as anti-queen walk because um, by the time uh, the queen is being locked onto, she's only like one building away from targeting the actual archer tower itself. So a very small period of time when it's able to lock onto the queen. The main use is if you kind of put it around the exterior of your base and thinking about La Loon, try to have it around when balloons will finish. Um, because it can take out those balloons that don't have any spells, that don't have full hit points. It can take those out in a very, very uh, fast hurry. So keep that in mind. That's when I would recommend using it here. The This base went down to the Falcon, actually. Um, so that will wrap up this replay. As far as the geared up mortar goes, doesn't matter. I mean, it is pretty much the same. I'd actually recommend the normal mortar because the geared up mortar doesn't one shot wall breakers. If the wall breaker is moving, it might only get hit by like one shell. So you got to be careful. Also, doesn't one shot skeletons. The normal mortar is typically the way to go, but that's a very small detail. I'm not going to talk too much about it. Anyway, that's the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, shout out to my uh, patron on Patreon who requested this video. If you guys are interested in that for the next month, check out my Patreon page. Until next time, see you guys later. Bisectatron out.